It's Tuesday, August 27th. Scope Span 24 7 News. It's Niels with Nandan coming to you live from. Here are the major headlines. G come to end house to house extensive claims and objections. Burby's poultry farmer found dead. How questions plans for civil use heritage park. The GWI's hinterland water supply current chicken shortage affecting vendor vendors. Start of tonight's newscast by to decide on a way forward regarding house to house registration exercise. The Yan Elections Commission Justice Claudette Singh has to end the ongoing registration claims and objections period. Story. Following long hours of deliberations and many different views, the GCOM chair today decided to call the house to house registration exercise to an end and proceed with an extensive claims and objections period before extracting the preliminary list of electors. The house to house registration will come to an end on the 31st of August. She will be issuing the order, which will vary the other order. That order will be issued by tomorrow to be gazetted, so the registration will come to an end on the 31st of August. No other decision has been taken. There were discussions as to whether they're going to use the data or not use the data, but she's playing that by ear to see how long use of the data will take, what is involved, and then she will take a decision. What was, the, was, was on the decision? Was the decision unanimous? It was the chairman's decision. There was no vote. Opposition appointed GCOM Commissioner Bibi Shadik. Meanwhile, government appointed GCOM Commissioner Vincent Alexander said they are waiting a timetable on when the compilation of the voters list will commence at their next meeting. Well, I think what's important in the first instance is that the host to host information will not be discarded as was required by others, and that that information will be integral. Uh, to the process. In some regards, the process is unfolding. It's still a work in, process, in progress. So you, so you support this as a, this means as a method of cleansing the list? It's not a matter of what I support. It's a matter of what decision the commission has made. Commissioner, but, commission chairman. Well, it, it, in effect, the commission chairman listened to all of the arguments. And as you know, the commission chairman, in, in large respect, is the balancing factor in GCOM. So what the commission chairman pronounces has to be seen as the decision of the commission. A statement released by GCOM said, the commission has an obligation to produce a credible official list of electors in the first instance and ultimately credible elections. As such, GCOM said it will continue to further deliberate on other matters of importance for the holding of general and regional elections within the shortest possible time, and Secretariat will continue to implement a number of operations, in particular training of polling day staff and procurement of non-sensitive materials. Some 297,000 persons have been registered in the ongoing house-to-house -house registration exercise. For Globespan 24-7 News, I am Kippany Jordan. Thanks, Kippany. Police are currently investigating the alleged murder of a poultry farmer who was battered by... Dead is 49-year-old Nigel Matthews, called Tubby of Lot 14 Springlands, Quarantine. According to information received, the man's body was discovered on Monday in front of an abandoned house in the nearby village. Pensioner Malcolm Hernandez, who shared a home with the now-dead man, explained that he came home on Sunday and met Matthews imbibing. A few minutes later, he stated that he was going out for a bit, but never returned home. He said he going on the road. I said, no, man. What the? You on the road? Why you going now? Come, come, come out, come. He said, no man, I'm coming back in the next half an hour. Right, so I go out there, I'm waiting on my cycle and the cycle come. I still just wait a, a little time. I left here a little after 10. The man's roommate related that when he returned home and discovered that Matthews had not returned, 
he knew something was amiss. And he's in, right? How we, we just left the door, how we just left the door, right? Just that. We just bolt it from inside. So when anybody come, he or me come, if we sleep inside, we car, right? So when I look at the say, no, this is unusual. And um, I sat down there, I tell you there, I sat down there, actually minutes to two. And then I go and I lie down. Not five minutes after I lie down, his niece came calling. And she called me and told me she heard somebody call her. And she heard that somebody took him up and he's down at some shot, caught in Rampur. Upon hearing the news, he and the company of the man's brother ventured to the scene where they made the shocking discovery. The man was lying bloody and battered, clutching a piece of broken wood with a stab wounds to his side. To the shot cut. So we go to the shot cut. And when, like from here, from, from here to that blue drum, when I saw him, I turned to the brother. I said, my friend dead. That's what I said. I said, my friend dead. That's the man dead. So when he got hold and cold, they said, man, this man dead, man. Globespan 24-7 News understands that the man was seen at a gamble shop where he and another male got into an altercation because of money owed. Police have since arrested one suspect for questioning. Investigations are ongoing. For Globespan 24-7 News, Shikima Day. Thanks, Shakima. This is Sandra Granger has spoken out of domestic violence in Guyana. The First Lady says that citizens must play a role in ensuring it does not continue. Domestic violence is not only physical. We would have seen a manifestation of the physical nature of domestic violence, but there's also violence against the person, which could be um, psychological abuse. I mean, really belittling a person um, in any relationship, uh, which is a symbol, a symbol of the, the power of the, of the perpetrator. Um, and this, this happens throughout the country, across the races, across the classes, across ethnicities. So we have to say what it is that makes people feel that they must demonstrate this power because it's not love, it's power against the person. Um, are the egos of our males so stunted that they cannot accept that a woman decides, I don't think I want to go with you anymore? Or if she answers him, him back, he can decide, well, this is not, quote, respectful to him. Most recently, in a one-week span, two women from villages on the east coast of Demerara were brutally stabbed to death by their male partners. This has caused widespread condemnation. We will post a video in its entirety of the Ghana's first lady speaking on the issue during an interview. Broadcasters will soon experience more efficient service. This follows the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the Ghana National Broadcasting Authority, GNBA, and the Ghana Telecommunications Agency, GTA. The MOU was signed during GNBA's fourth stakeholder engagement forum attended by licensed broadcasters from around Guyana. The agreement will see, spectr see spectrum fees being paid directly to the GNB. A, effective from January 2020. Chairman of that authority, Leslie Sobers explained, and I quote, some time ago, you, the broadcasters, had indicated to the GNBA that having to pay the spectrum fees to the NMFU National Frequency Management Unit as a separate entity and pay broadcast fees to the GNBA as another entity was somewhat burdensome. We promised to examine that situation to simplify the payment of fees. I'm pleased to announce that both spectrum fees and broadcast licenses fees will be payable to the GMBA and the issuance of a broadcast license will be proof of payment of spectrum fees as well." End quote. A GMBA's board member and director of the Ghana Telecommunications Agency, Andre Griffith, said the MOU is part of a reform process intended to make the job for broadcasters simpler. These stakeholder engagements are held to create a better environment for broadcasters. Two more engagements are slated to be held 
before the end of 2019. Stallholders, both in the Stabrook and border markets, claim the, that customers are complaining about the high prices for chicken, which is a direct result of the current chicken shortage Guyana have been faced with over the past few months. Kipney Jordan filed this report. While the price for a pound of chicken was somewhere between $360 and $380 a few months ago, this has now jumped to $460 to $480. As such, consumers have been complaining, but some saying that they can no longer afford it. Many stallholders in these markets that we have interviewed today have confirmed this also. One such stallholder told Globespan 24-7 News that the prices are turning away customers. Yeah, they, they're complaining. Some of them complain about the, the shortage and some of them complaining at the price that they have to pay. But some sometimes, you know, you can do better, but God good. It's the provide. That was Esther from the Starbrook Market who told this newscast that stallholders like herself are coping with the situation. Oh, they affected business a lot because we don't get the amount that we're supposed to get the full amount, but we're getting a little bit to come hold up a little bit with the, the shortage, but we can go with it flow, you know. In the meantime, a vendor at the border market named Kevin said he doesn't think that the shortage will end anything soon. However, Kevin said the situation in border is different from that in Starbrook, as the sales for chicken has increased since the shortage. However, consumers are not pleased. Price, yes, they complain a lot, but the price is kind of rough for both people. You know, it's pay four or five dollars a pound of chicken, four twenty a pound. Can you, if you buy it for four hundred dollar and four twenty, you can sell for um, four. You got them to get work to pay. So you got to put on a twenty dollar. You got to make something. You, you, you get rent to pay, you get staff to pay, you, you know. So it's very tight. It's very tight for both people. Some people say they can eat at all. Some say they can eat beef. Some say they can eat fish. We now eat chicken. The current chicken shortage being experienced is likely to run into September and beyond, according to the recent statements made by the Ghana Poultry Association in sections of the media. In a July 24 report, the Ghana Livestock Authority stated that it was monitoring the shortage, which should have ended within a week's time when the issue was initially reported back in June. Efforts to contact the Guyana Livestock Authority and the Guyana Poultry Association to get a comment on measures implemented to reduce the shortage have proven futile. For Globespan 24-7 News, I am Kippany Jordan. Thanks, Kippany. Efforts are being intensified to ensure that as far as possible, hinterland communities benefit from possible water supplies. This was one of several issues disclosed by Managing Director of the Ghana Water Incorporated, Dr. Richard Van West Charles, to the Department of Public Information. He said as a signatory to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, the agency is at the forefront of ensuring that goal number six is realized which speaks of equitable access to portable water. This corresponds to the mission of GWI and it is in line with the strategic plan of the company. The GWI head explained that an analysis was done which led to the establishment of the hinterland department. On a firm footing late last year, we did a proper diagnosis of the situation and we went through more than 35 villages so far we are clear in terms of the population's access and where there are issues, and quote, Dr. Van West Charles added. Getting the water to communities is occasionally challenging, he said, due to the terrain and distances of some homes. However, the GWI head noted this is negated by the fact that most communities live in clusters, open quote. We use special modeling to ensure the gradients are right and the pressure that we want to get it to where we want to get it is correct." End quote. Meanwhile, the Ghana Agriculture and General Workers Union, GAWU, has questioned the move by the Ghana Sugar Corporation, Gaisuku, to transform closed estates into sugar museums and heritage parks. We have this story now. 
In 2012, then Minister of Agriculture Dr. Leslie Ramsamy had announced plans to develop a sugar museum, a collaborative effort between the government and other agencies aimed at preserving Guyana's vast sugar history. Those plans never came to fruition. This year, the same plans were raised again with Kaisuko at the forefront with plans to transform two of the closed sugar estates into a sugar museum and a sugar heritage park with the same aim in mind. Commenting on this announcement was the head of the Guyana Agriculture and General Workers Union, Kumal Chand. Chan questioned how the move will help to alleviate the sufferings of the many sugar workers that were left without a job. Of course, one would want to know um, what employment that will create there. Other, other ways of, um, they could still provide what you talk about, a museum and what else? Heritage Park. A heritage park. That they could do. But one has to look at the resources and what employment it, it will garner. And uh, remember the, 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 the large number of people you have there suffering where those estates were closed. Chan stated that Kaisuku should have gone down the intended route where the closed sugar estates were scheduled for privatization. What is more interesting is for Gaisuku to um, move in the direction it promised. One, to have the closed estates um, valued and advertised for sale. And the two, to have the three remaining estate um, performing to the capacity so that the goal to produce 140,000 tons by 2020 will be realized. According to previous reports, the Eiffelot estate has been identified as the site for the Sugar Museum and also the Sugar Heritage Park. Kaisuku has organize a second media tour for the cultural sugar heritage tourism, this time at the Albion Estate in Burbis this Saturday. Reporting for Globespan 24-7, Shikima Day. Thanks, Shikima. More women are joining the local forestry sector according to Natural Resources Minister Raphael Trotman, who said this is good as it creates gender balance for this key sector of Guyana. Here is more. We can add that uh, the forestry, community forest development, uh, for the forest half of 2019 under the FAO EU flat program, we have trained 543 persons from 62 mining, 62 community forest organizations and I'm happy to report that 35% of these are women. So that was Natural Resources Minister Raphael Trotman addressed in a recent media conference. He said this points to the fact that more women are joining the local forestry sector. Years ago, women showed little to no interest in joining this sector, but this has changed over the years. Further, Trotman said that his ministry is currently engaged in conducting a national forestry inventory. The last one was done 50 years ago, so we're happy that we're doing another inventory at the Stanley as we look at what is happening in Hora, in fact, what is happening in Brazil. We appreciate even more the value of our standing forests. In the meantime, Ghana's deforestation rate stands at 0.052%, which is a new record for the country. Insert. For Globespan 24-7 News, I'm Samuel Suknandan. Financial institutions have been warned to stop asking citizens about their political affiliation. A circular from the Bank of Ghana to all local financial institutions, money transfer agencies, Cambio, as well as insurance companies, agents and brokers has warned the institutions to ensure that in the course of conducting business, customers are not subjected to matters unrelated to their specific transactions. Open quote. It has come to the attention of the Bank of Ghana that customers have been questioned regarding their allegiance to or affiliation with any political party, end quote, 
The bank notes added that the conditions governing the issuance of license to these institutions do not include ascertaining the political persuasion or of any customer. We will take a short break to stay with us. We would like to ask all of our faithful viewers to kindly like and follow Globespan 24-7 Facebook page and subscribe to Globespan 24-7 YouTube channel to receive up-to-date notifications of when we are live. Globespan 24-7 has vacancies for full-time positions such as reporters, newscasters, and news editors. Persons serious about joining a new and dynamic news team are asked to send their application to careers at globespantechnology.com. Travelspan is pleased to announce special fares from New York to Guyana for Christmas. Seats are available to travel and depending on which dates you choose, fares range from $8.49 to $11.69. These are limited block seats on American Airlines non-stop flight from JFK to Guyana. Call 718-845-0437. That's 718-845-0437. Or book online at Travelspan.com. Travelspan does have a payment plan. So travel plans, call Travel Span. Amos Travel Service is pleased to support Globespan 24-7 broadcasts. We provide travel solutions via our four locations in Trinidad. Shibonas at 665-3383, Valpa 645-1604, Port of Spain 625-0800, and San Fernando at 652-4789. Remember, when you travel, Amrols is the way to go. This newscast is brought to you with the kind compliments of Travel Span GT, with locations in Georgetown and Burbese. For all your travel needs, call Travel Span GT at 327-1701, located at Lot 3A North Road, Georgetown, between Camp and Wellington Street. In Rose Hall, call 337-4287, and in New Amsterdam, call 333-6230. Call Travel Span today. Thanks for staying with us. We'll now take a look at our regional and international news. Tropical storm Dorian intensified yesterday as it approached the Caribbean on a track that will take it near Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic by midweek, possibly at hurricane strength, U.S. forecasters said. Although the storm was moving towards Cuba and Florida, forecasters said it could lose strength as it passes over Mount Tenuous terrain in Hispaniola, the Caribbean island shared by Haiti and the Dominican Republic. The system was packing near 60 mile per hour winds and was expected to strengthen over the next few days. Open quote. Dorian could be near hurricane strength when it passes through the northern windward islands on Tuesday and is expected to be a hurricane when it moves near Puerto Rico and eastern Hispaniola. Uh, the end quote, the Miami-based National Hurricane Center said, the warning came with Puerto Rico still recovering almost exactly two years after Hurricane Maria wrecked havoc, uh, disrupting the island's entire ecosystem and destroying its infrastructure. After nearly a year of controversy over the debt toll from the September 2017 storm, health authorities put the official debt toll at 2,975 supplanting the Puerto Rican government's long-standing figure of 64. The NHC said the storm was expected to pass in the vicinity of the island on Wednesday and reach the eastern side of Hispaniola later that night. The Brazilian government has said it will reject an offer of aid from G7 countries to help tackle fires in the Amazon rainforest. French President Emmanuel Macron who hosted a G7 summit that ended on Monday, said $22 million will be released. But Brazilian ministers say the money is not needed and accuse foreign powers of wanting to control, wanting control, sorry, for of the Amazon. Satellite data show fires, mostly in the Amazon region, are burning at record levels. Commenting on the G7 offer of aid, Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro's chief of staff, Onyx Lorenzoni, told the global news website, thanks, but maybe those resources are more relevant to reforce Europe. Macron cannot even avoid a predictable fire in a church that is part of the world's heritage, and he wants to give us lessons for our country. Lorenzoni added in a reference to the fire, 
that hit Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris in April. And now for a look at what's happening in sport. Residents of Union Neighborhood Democratic Council will soon have an upgraded playground to utilize complements of the Ministry of Communities. The upgrade is expected to cost approximately $8 million. Among the expected work includes the construction of a new fence, bleachers to sanitary facilities, leveling of the field, and the installment of six floodlights around the area. The ground is expected to benefit residents from as far as number 28 in the afternoon, and with the improvements presently being done, more residents are expected to make use of the venue. The residents are very happy and have expressed glee with the new developments, especially since they will also benefit from the new construction of three bus sheds, streetlights, and a bridge in the area. United States international Carly Lloyd has been asked by an NFL team to kick in their final preseason game, according to her trainer. The two-time World Cup winner, 37, was invited to an NFL training session last week, and a clip of her kicking a 55-yard field goal went viral. In an interview with Fox Sport, her trainer added, I don't want to say who it is, however, she is playing Thursday for the national team. So that was the conflict. The U.S., who won the World Cup for a fourth time in July, play a friendly with Portugal in Philadelphia on Thursday. The Philadelphia Eagles invited Lloyd, who had a loan spell with Manchester City in 2017, to a joint session with the Baltimore Ravens, and she practiced kicks with Ravens players. And that has brought us to the end of today's news. But before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. GCOM to end house-to-house -house registration to move to extensive continuous registration. Burby's poultry farmer found dead on roadway. Gaw questions plans for Sugar Museum and Heritage Park. GWI's hinterland water supply program progressive and chicken Current chicken shortage affecting consumers, says vendors. Thanks for watching Globespan 24-7 News. On behalf of myself, the news and technical team, until next time, do have a great evening. Goodbye.